Robert Hill, are you surprised at how politically divisive, certainly for your old Liberal Party, the ETS debate has been in Australia? Yes, I, I am. Um, because it was, well, I started work on, uh, on an ETS for Australia some 10 years ago as the environment minister under the Howard government. And although there was no way in the world you could get it, uh, you could get it adopted, it was too far out in front, um, and nobody was trying to stop me from working on it. And then the last election, uh, an ETS was actually coalition policy. So I'm a bit surprised that at this late stage it has um, you know, brought such deep division with it. With a mind to the Kyoto process, which you were quite centrally involved with back in 1997 and beyond, and looking ahead too to Copenhagen, how important is it that the United States and Australia are more intricately involved in the process going forward? Well, Australia and the US uh, were fully engaged in Kyoto, and uh, you know we're part of part of the umbrella group, which we Australia led. I led. Uh, Vice President Gore went to Kyoto, and he actually bid up the target. So they were very much part of that whole process. Short of uh, ratification. Well, in the end, they didn't ratify, but they didn't get the Ky Kyoto didn't settle everything, uh, and there were certain flexibility mechanisms that the US needed, and we took that to a subsequent meeting in The Hague, and basically they got voted down by the Europeans, so they didn't come on board, which I think was a great mistake. But I've, but I've always believed you, you can't get a global solution to, to, carb, to climate change without the US being a party. Uh, it's the world's largest economy, and until very, very recently, the world's largest emitter, certainly the world's largest developed economy emitter. Uh, and, uh, you've, and, and that's one of the reasons I always thought it was important to stay close to the United States. You know, some, some countries wanted to push the US out because they saw them as failing to cooperate in not ratifying. Um, but I always thought that it's better to stay with them and eventually I hope to bring them on board as part of the solution because only that way will you get an effective solution. So if that's now happening, and it seems to be happening again, it's a good thing. Could we see a, a similar sort of a, a schism emerging in, in Copenhagen, where you can't please anybody? No one will be totally satisfied, uh, but you can, you can start to see the likely Copenhagen outcome, uh, and, and the Greens, I don't think, will be very happy with it. Uh, they'll say that it doesn't match the science. There's not enough. The commitments that are being made uh, are not adequate. The Europeans won't like it because it won't, it won't be legally binding. Um, and, uh, and the um, developing world as such will say the money hasn't come with it. The money is still a promise out there. I think there'll be some, early, some money for early spending, but the big money they're talking about for both adaptation and mitigation, they're not going to get at Copenhagen. So they won't be happy either. Um, but um, uh, it might well be, you know, if everyone's unhappy, perhaps the outcome's not all that bad. So if, if it's not You'll all never that get bad, them all happy. <laughs> that's right. We know that President Obama is going to be attending the Copenhagen Conference in person. How important is that to the process? I think it's uh, symbolically very important. It um, hasn't happened in the past. Vice Presidents have been sent on these jobs. Uh, he's also going to attend early in the meeting, which has upset some people because they want him to be part of the final negotiation, and I don't think he's in a position to do that. I think he has a very delicate balancing role at the moment in relation to the international expectation as against his own domestic situation. One of the problems in Kyoto was that uh, the Clinton administration went there with a target without having any congressional backing. Basically, the Congress wasn't wasn't interested. Um, and you get that famous Senate vote to zero. Uh, Obama knows that he he if if he gets out too far out ahead of the Congress, he'll be in trouble. He, he needs to bring them with him, and he's in a situation where the congressional debate is still work in progress. He's put down a target which uh, is is exactly the figure that uh, came out of the. Uh, the bill in the in the lower house in the United States, so it doesn't look as if he's he's been too presumptuous. 
Uh, and I think that um, I think overall that's a good signal. But um, you know, some some expect more and more, and will expect that no matter what he does. Domestically, in the United States, to a large extent, the debate over the ETS, the environmental debate, has been overshadowed by the healthcare debate. Has that been to the benefit or the detriment of the ETS debate there? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I think that certainly the, the healthcare debate has pushed the, the climate debate back. And that tells you one thing, it tells you that in domestic US terms the healthcare debate's more important and more important to the Democratic Party. They've taken that as a higher priority. Uh, now the fact that it's been pushed back, is that going to make it uh, more likely or less likely that it'll ultimately pass? I think the further it's pushed back, the more difficult it becomes. Because the, the President, probably in some ways the best chance the President had was in his first his first year. I think next year is going to get pretty tough with the you know, start going towards the half-term elections. Uh, there will also be those, as you were indicating, who say, who've said, I'm assuming health gets through, who said, well, we gave Obama health, he can't expect everything. It's a difficult debate in the Senate anyway because it's, um, it's not just a debate about between the parties, which is interesting, this question about ideology. It's much more a debate about regional interests hard-nosed in local interests. So you can't, you don't, whatever discipline they have in the US political system, which is not great, it doesn't play up too well in this issue. So Obama is still confident that he'll get it through, and I know there are senior members of Congress are still confident, uh, and I hope that they do get up a domestic scheme next year, but I think it's actually going to be very challenging. Robert Hill, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.